Hi guys and welcome back to Learn Extra Live. I hope you enjoyed your break and grade 11s, I hope that you are ready for this awesome, awesome show. Um, exactly like a friend of mine on the Facebook page said, Doctor, he said, grade 11s, now is the time to work hard because before you know it, you're gonna be in grade 12 next year. Very, very wise words. Okay, we don't normally do this and I'm probably gonna make my producer very, very um, scared, but don't worry, just relax. Normally, we give away the Casio um, labeler only the next week, but I want to announce last week's winners um, of this labeler. I'm posting onto the page too, don't stress, but because of these two winners, I'm very happy to announce that Dr. Fulani and Musa Ntladi have won this awesome, awesome labeler from last week. I will put onto the page how you get into contact and how you get this awesome prize, but what I want to let you guys know is that they've been interacting on the page. They help other mindsets out. Dr. posts inspirational posts, and they help each other out. Mosa had 149 posts on the page and Doctor had 123. So they are chatting to us all the time and that's why they get the very, very fancy um, Casio labeler. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it back to Dina so she can carry on with the lesson and we can learn more and we can learn extra. Dina, take it away. Thanks, Indy, and congratulations to those who've won the labeler. Keep posting, you know, maybe a labeler's coming your way if you keep posting. Right, for now, let's carry on with um, some some of the questions that you've asked, um, one of those being what is the period of the cos x graph and also what would happen if you were sketching y equals negative 2 cos x. So let's look at those two questions. Firstly, the period of the cos x graph means that the coefficient of the, of the angle is 1. And when the coefficient of the angle is 1, the period is always 360. So it's fixed. It, it's not going to change tomorrow or it's going to decide it's going to be something else the following day. It's fixed at 360. If that coefficient of x changes to anything other than 1, then your period will be affected. For now, it's 360. How is your period affected? By taking 360 and dividing it by that coefficient. That's how the period is, is calculated. Now, for those that have asked about y equals negative 2 cos x, so we plotted just now 2 cos x, what would negative 2 cos x look like? You do the same thing. You would take the values of your quadrant angles, and the values of our quadrant angles are a 1, a 0, a negative 1, a 0, and a 1. So you would take those quadrant angles and you'd say, these are the quadrant angle values. What must I do? I must multiply it by negative 2. So take each of those values and multiply by negative 2. What do you get? I would get a negative 2 if I multiply by negative 2. I would get a 0. I would get a 2. I would get a 0. And I would get a negative 2. Then you go back to your quadrant angles, because those haven't changed, and you plot those values. I now get a negative 2. I'm getting a 0. I'm getting a positive 2. I'm getting a 0. And I'm getting a negative 2. So my graph would look like that. It would be a reflection about the x-axis, or a reflection about the angle axis. So your amplitude does not change. Many people think that the coefficient means amplitude. That's not true. The coefficient just is there to tell us what the quadrant angle va y values is doing. Your amplitude is defined as the maximum distance above the x-axis. So my amplitude is still 2, because from the x-axis all the way to my maximum value, that would be my amplitude. So my amplitude is still 2. Okay, amplitude is never negative, it's always positive. So my amplitude is still 2, um, but the best way to always work from is from your parent graph. That is fixed, that never changes. Utilize that information to see how do my y values change as a result of multiplying my parent value by negative 2. Well, these values will change, those values will still be 0, so that's the graph. So any negatives will create reflections about the x-axis. So th that's to answer some of the questions that you've posted. Then um, we were doing the transformation when all these values are going to be lowered by 2. So again, if we had to take our parent graph and we have, there's my parent, 360 degrees, that's 90, that's 180, that's 270, that's 360. And I take my x and my y values, so I take my x 
and my cos x values, then I would get my quadrant angles, north, 90, 180, 270, 360. And the reason I take my quadrant angles is because, depending on the domain, I will then carry on do repeating the same thing. As long as I know what one section of the pair is doing, then my repetitions will carry on. So I don't have to work at every single angle thereafter. Right, so my cos values are a 1, a 0, a negative 1, a 0, and a 1. If I'm now going to minus 2 from that, what's it going to look like? Well, 1 minus 2 is going to be equal to negative 1. A naught minus 2 is a minus 2. Um, negative 1 minus 2 is a negative 3. And a negative, a naught minus 2 is a minus 2. And a 1 minus a 2 is a negative 1. So I'm going to be plotting there at negative 1, which is over here. Then I'm going to go down to negative 2. Then I'm going to go down to negative 3. Then back to negative 2. And where am I going? Because I'm not sticking to my graph. Let's just stick to the graph here. So we would go 90 at negative 2, 180 would be at negative 3, then we'd go back to negative 2 and up again to negative 1. So my whole graph has translated down by um, 2 units. So everywhere it's translated by 2 units. Okay? So this here would be y equals cos x minus 2. If it was plus 2, you would take your y values and you would raise your quadrant angles and then just trace the points so you don't have to sit there and point plot. You just take your quadrant values and work with those as your uh, transformed values of that quadrant. Right, and then the last transformation that we were working with was the cos of x minus 30. What do you think the period of that graph is? So we had k of x was equal to cos of x minus 30. What is the period? Remember the golden rule, if I have 1x, then the period is going to be 360. If I have a coefficient of x, then the period will change. 1x, period always 360. Right, so my graph is still going to be doing, it's a period graph, so it's still doing that. Okay, so that's still 90, that's 180, 270, 360. So that you must memorize, you must know it very well. My cycle of cars from max all the way to max travels through a minimum. And therefore, just putting in another word, the range is going to be from 1 to minus 1. So there are no cos values here at 2. There are no cos values minus 2. It doesn't exist. The range is found that cos values are sitting between 1 and negative 1. Okay, so how does that affect the graph? Well, like all algebra graphs that you are familiar with, the moment you have an x that has got a constant attached to it, minus 30 plus 30, there will be a horizontal shift. So x minus 30 must mean that at 30 degrees, I'm going to get where the zero is. So in place of uh, where the zero was, and now I have that 30 degrees, because when I substitute 30 in, I get 30 minus 30 is zero, so the cos of zero is now going to be one, so I'm going to get a max at over here, which means that if I substitute um, a 90 minus 30, I'm only going to get 60. So in order for me to get this value of zero, um, I actually have to have 120 degrees. I've got to have it there at 120. So this one's at 30. This one's at 120. 120 minus 30 gives me the 90. So what should be happening at 90 is now happening at 120. What should be happening at 180 is now going to happen 30 degrees later. This is going to be 30 degrees later, and that's going to be 30 degrees later. So my graph is going to still go through there. It's going to go towards the minimum. It's going to go through zero and all the way back up there. But everything has shifted 30 degrees along. So my zero, my negative one is now at 210. 270 plus 30 would be 300, and this one would be at 390. So my period is still 360 degrees. Very important, my period is still 360 degrees. So from max to max, I'm still getting 360 degrees. However, every single value has shifted to the right by 30 degrees. So my quadrant angles, 30 degrees later, 30 degrees later, 30 degrees later. And that's 
a nice way of plotting that, that shift is to be able to establish where is the zero starting. Well, the zero would be a 30 degrees because 30 minus 30 would give me a naught. So cos of naught is one. So at 30, it's now giving me a one. So if you know that, then you can take every quadrant angle and just add on 30 degrees. That's one way of doing it if you had the parent graph. Another way of doing it is if you've got 360 degrees as your period, then your quadrant angles are found every 90. Okay, so the quadrant angles are found every 90 degrees. So what you now do is you can say, let's choose orange, um, 30 degrees plus 90 degrees. Okay, would give me 120. 120 plus 90 degrees would give me the 210. 210 plus 90 degrees and 300 plus 90 degrees. So you would start with your zero, knowing that it's one, and then since the period is 360, my quadrant angles will be moving every 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and that's how you'd plot your translation. So instead of point plotting with your calculator, y we've done this without a calculator, just utilizing the, the parent graph and how the translation affects that parent graph. Okay, so to uh, summarize then, we would get the y equals 2 cos x. We would get y equals cos 2x. We would get y equals cos x minus 2. And we would get y equals cos of x minus 30 degrees. Okay, so what is the period in each case? write down what the period would be. Okay, cos x, 1x, period is 360. Cos 2x, coefficient of x is 2, so the period is parent, divided by 2 is 180. 1x, period is 360. 1x, period is 360. Okay. And we've actually got this is in the way. So we've got what is a transformation? Let's just summarize the transformation. So the coefficient of the ratio will affect the amplitude. The coefficient of the angle will affect the period. This will be a vertical translation, and this one will be a horizontal translation. Okay, and as we've looked at when we were sketching, you must work with the parent graph, and you must work with the quadrant angles. Um, otherwise, it just doesn't go anywhere. Right, let's see if I can find on one of our pages, let's see if we've got a period change. No period change. Let's see if we've got a period change here. No period change either. Okay, let's look at this one. If we're given one plus sine x and g of x equals cos 2x, determine the period and range of f and g. Okay, let's look at the period. What is the period of this graph? sine 1x, so the period for sine is also 360 degrees. Remember, period is not an interval notation. It doesn't start at one place and end at the other. It's infinite, so it's one value. I find a lot of people give it an interval notation, just one value. How many degrees does it take? Just how many? One value. What is the period of this graph? Uh -huh. It's got a coefficient of the angle, so the period of g Parent period divided by 2 is 180 degrees. Okay? That's the period. What about the range? The range of f. We need to think about it a little bit. What about the range of g? 
Okay, there's no translation, there's just a period change. So the range of G will always be from minus one to one. There is no translation involved. This one plus sine x, there is a range involved. So I would suggest that you just plot what are the parent values for sine in its cycle. Now we've been dealing with cos, but sine behaves in the same way except it starts at a different place. It starts at zero degrees zero, so it will go zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. And depending where you are with the angles, you will um, d establish which part of the cycle you want, but it really is a zero, one, zero, negative one, zero. So from a zero to the next repetition of an increasing uh, value, you would have 360 degrees. So cos and sine are both periods of 360. And the range would also be for the pairing graph, a minus one to one. However, can you see we are taking sine, we're adding one onto it. So we have to take the y values. So the best way is to say, right, what are my y values um, for my sine graph? So sine x would be a zero, a one, a zero, a minus one, and a zero. And that would happen at my quadrant angles, naught, quadrant angles of 90, 180, 270, and 360. Now I'm going to work out what is sine x plus 1. I'm taking that value, I'm adding 1. I'm taking that value, I'm adding 1. I'm taking that value, adding 1, adding 1, and adding 1. Okay? So my graph, what is the smallest y value? It's 0. And what is the smallest or what is the largest y value, it's two. So my range for this graph goes from zero all the way to two. Smallest value first from zero to two. So when you have a vertical translation, your graph is actually affected in the range, okay? And then obviously the second graph is to sketch the graphs of f and g for a particular domain. Now, I wouldn't suggest that you look at this domain and start there. I would suggest that you always have an overview of what this graph's shape is looking like across its period, and then go back to the domain and sketch it accordingly. Okay, so we have um, an F graph. This graph is the value of sine x plus 1, and we've got this graph as the cos of 2x. So that's g of x. Right, and we had a discussion around the coefficient of x uh, of the angle, but we didn't really discuss how we would plot it. Since we start off with a period, and the period for this graph, so let's talk about this. Let's zoom in on here. Um, so that's cos 2x. Okay, so the period is now 180. We've established that, okay? But when we're working with the quadrant angles, we have a 90, a 180, a 270, 360. We've got four values that we've got to plot in that period. So the value is going to be compressed, but I still need four of them. So I would say that I need to plot every 180 degrees divided by 4, which means I've got to plot every 45. If I plot every 45, 45 becomes my new quadrant angle. Then 45 onto that would be 90, 45 onto that, so that I get my quadrant angles. And so my overview of this graph is that it's doing this. It's going naught to 180, and halfway would be 90, and halfway would be 45, and halfway would be 135. And the parent graph says to me that we start at 1, we then go through to 0, we go minus 1, back to zero and back to one. So there's my little graph. So that's my overview of what's happening. I'm actually showing that I need, when I plot, I need to plot in 45s because my graph is asking me to do that. Okay, so now that I know what that one's doing, I also know what sine is doing. I can now begin, I can now begin to look at what that domain looks like and we'll do that just after the break. See, Dina just loves teaching. I know she looks with her beady eye up at the counter and she knows it's time for a break. Okay, guys, I know that you have a lot of questions. So during the break, I'm going to go through them with Dina and we'll see what we can answer. We'll definitely be taking questions in the last 15 minutes of the show. So hold tight to your seats. We'll be back now. <laughs> 